Hi there and welcome to the Monte Carlo Manifest software. Um, in this software, uh, you're going to be able to perform a Monte Carlo simulation on every race, every single day. Um, now, how the Monte Carlo simulation works is, we're going to open a race and by default we've got the official rating and the RP rating for each horse in that race. Now, a rating is an estimate of a horse's performance in a given area. Um, so we can have speed ratings and that's an estimate of a horse's performance in speed. Class ratings is an estimate of a horse's performance in class. Um, form ratings are an estimate of a horse's performance in form. But the key word here is estimate. A rating by definition can only ever be an estimate. And what that means is, is that there is some variance. So, for example, on Next to Nowhere, we think that the official rating for the horse is 95, but the true rating for the horse, which is unknown, it's not possible to know this, um, but it could be anywhere between 90 and 100. So a Monte Carlo simulation works by saying the variance is um, for Next to Nowhere, this horse could have a rating anywhere between 90 and 100, but we think it's most likely going to be around 95. Um, and then what it does, every time we run the simulation, we choose a number between 90 and 100, um, because that's the variance for that particular horse, so it could have achieved that anywhere. Now, if we only did this simulation once, then that's not going to be a very strong test. Um, but what we do is we perform this simulation a thousand times or even more if we want to. So every time we're choosing a number between 90 and 100 for this horse and we're doing the same for all of the other horses. And then what we're doing after every simulation we're seeing whether this, whether next to nowhere be Arizona River and whether next to nowhere be Night Valiant and whether next to nowhere beat Push Me. And so we're counting how many wins against other runners each horse has had after every simulation. And that allows us to see which horses are likely to be the strongest runners in the race based on a thousand or ten thousand simulations, however many we want to perform. And this is a very powerful method of finding strongest runners in the race based on ratings. So I'm going to show you how this works now in real time. So the variance for these ratings by default, we have 15% down here, as you can see. Now you can change these. We could put the official rating to 10% and the RP rating to 20%. So the bigger the variance, the bigger the range um, that we're going to be choosing from. So if we had a horse rated 100 with a 10% variance, we're going to be choosing from anywhere between 90 and 110, but we think the horse is most likely to be around 100. But if we have a variance of 20%, we're gonna be choosing anywhere from 80 to 120, but we still think it's most likely to be around 100. Um, so the bigger the variance, um, the less sure we are about the accuracy of the rating. Um, and we find 15% is a very good base rate to start on which is why it's set to that as default okay so you've got your ratings and we've got the variance set there and you can just leave it at default that's fine um, and then to start the simulation we come over to this button here the bottom right of the screen and we simply click start simulation and here you can see what I've just described happening uh, the default number of simulations is a thousand and what's this happening is every simulation that's run we're choosing a number within that variance and then we're comparing each horse to each of the other horses to see how many um, races it's winning um, against each of the other horses individually um, and the easiest way to see this is just to look at the percentages so we can see that next to nowhere is winning about 11.5 percent of its races under the official rating but if we move over to the RP, it's only winning about 8.45% um, of those. And then, of course, we've got the total common column. So this is the total um, of all the ratings that we're simulating for here. 
uh, and we can see that next to nowhere is winning around 10% um, of its races. Now we're up to um, nearly 800 simulations here. So there's only a couple of hundred left. A thousand simulations is a very good number. It gives a, a very strong figure and you can see that because um, the percentages start to change less and less um, as the simulation takes place, which means we're getting more and more confident with those numbers. Uh, and now it's finished. We can see Next Noah has 10% and Night Valiant has 10.7%. But it looks to be quite a tight race, generally speaking. We've got um, a few horses here with um, just under 10%, and then, and it's not a very big drop to a couple others at just under 9%. So it looks to be quite a tight race based on these ratings. Now, once the simulation's finished, uh, you can export it as a CSV if you want to, or you can go back and change the variances again. Um, now, let's just choose another race and rerun this so um, here we go here's a, a six runner race at Fakenham uh, and as you can see our um, variance is reset to 15% and we'll just leave them at the default uh, and we'll start the simulation off it goes and you can see initially there's a lot of movement happening um, while we're at the beginning of the simulation uh, before it starts to settle down and the horses start to get um, a good uh, number of simulations we need a certain number to, to get statistical significance so just to clarify what's happening here is we're taking flaming george and picking a rating within its variance for the official rating we're taking santelm and picking a rating within its variance for its official rating and then we're comparing the two and seeing who won the race just between those two runners and then we're doing the same between flaming george and the thirsty bricky and then we're doing the same between Flaming George and Highbury High. And we repeat that until we've done it between all of the runners. So every runner has run against another runner. And that's one simulation. Uh, and then we do that a thousand times. So we're doing thousands and thousands of simulations here in just a few seconds. Um, and this is the first piece of software that has allowed you to do this at the click of a button. And as you can see, as this race is drawing to the end of the 1,000 simulations, uh, we can see that the total here for Flaming George is looking very strong, uh, followed by the Thirsty Brick. And then we've got a bit of a gap. So we would want to be concentrating our efforts uh, based on the official rating, the RP rating, on Thirsty Brick and Flaming George. So we come back here. Now, there's a lot of people who want to add um, their own rating. So if you've got your own ratings and you want to use this software as a simulation, that's no problem. We, when you go into the race like this, first time, um, you go to add a custom column. And you can see here you get a field where you can put in your rating, number one, um, and then you put in your rating for each of those runners, like so. Uh, if you want to add another rating in, that's fine. You just put add column and put in your second set of ratings and I'm just putting in some totally random figures here and when we finished adding those ratings we just press the save button and you can see that the ratings are added here um, and they're also being given a variance column down here where we can select their variance if we want to change it from the default and then we just simply press the start simulation and you can see that your ratings have now appeared in the window as well. And they're included in the simulation that is taking place. Um, and it's that simple. Now I'm just going to pause this um, because if you just want to run this on your own ratings, that's also possible. We add in your rating. Here we go. Um, for example, let's add another column. So we put our ratings in here. And we've saved it. And um, we don't want to use the official rating or the RPR rating. So we just uncheck those boxes. And then we run the simulation. And you can see it's taken out the two that we didn't want. And it's only running the simulation on your rating. Um, 
So it's as simple as that to run this complex uh, Monte Carlo simulation on either the official rating or the racing post rating. Um, now, there are some settings that you can change. So if we go to the settings tab, we have a variance field here. And this is the default variance, which is set to 15% by default. And then we have the iterations, and you can change this to 100 or to uh, 5,000 or whatever you want for default. 1,000 is a good number in terms of both time um, and statistical significance. Um, so I suggest you leave it at 1,000 until you get used to the software, but you can change it there if you want to. And then we have the default column settings. So by default, you have the official rating and the RPR rating. Um, if you want to remove one from the default, you can just deselect it or put it back in. And now for those of you who are racing dossier users, um, you can also access all of the racing dossier ratings inside the Monte Carlo manifest. Um, you don't need to do anything else. It will automatically know you've got a license to racing dossier. If you haven't got a license to racing dossier and you want to grab one, uh, then there is a button just below this video where you can go and get access to the racing dossier right now. And what that will do is when you press edit columns, it's going to allow you access to all of the racing dossier um, form ratings, speed ratings, class ratings um, that are available inside the racing dossier software. Um, so, for example, we could take uh, the speed rating in the last race or, or the speed projection. Um, and let's go up and take uh, one of the uh, form ratings, so uh, the PFP. Um, we're going to move those over there and save. And there we go, we've now got all those ratings and I'm going to save that. Um, come back here, open and we've got those ratings now inside the race. And when we run the simulation, we're running them also on the racing dossier ratings. Um, so if you're a racing dossier user, you have access to all of the racing dossier ratings automatically inside the Monte Carlo manifest. Um, if you haven't got a license to the racing dossier and you want to access all those ratings, then that's no problem. Click the link below this video and you can get a license to the racing dossier there. If you've got any other questions about the software or how to use it, then please leave a comment below. Uh, and if you like the software, then please do press the share button, press the like button, uh, tell other people about it. Um, it would be great if you would spread the word. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoy using the Monte Carlo Manifest.